hello guys today i would like to talk about the mobile phone price track prediction so what is the project about is basically we would want to start let's say a new mobile phone manufacturing company and we would like to decide the price range of the mobile phone this is important price range not the exact price so this changes that problem into a classification problem so we have collected uh, like 2000 mobile phones data with four levels of price range zero being the lowest and three being the highest price so basically uh, what i have done here like i have loaded the data which is basically the trend.csv in our case and before doing that i have imported all the libraries so pandas numpy matplotlib seaborn and like for modeling i have imported this four this matrix is for using the accuracy method of the matrix and i have used the knn so k never classify so as the uh, video suggests uh, like i mentioned it is more about focusing on the cross validation not much about the feature engineering or data exploration okay so i have kept all the all these things very minimal so i just load the train and test so you would be dealing with the train data set only so let's check what kind of information we have so we have basically battery power, Bluetooth, clock speed. So these are the information which we have. So based on these features, I want to, or we want to check like which price range tag should we assign this mobile phone, okay? So we did a bit of visualization, not much. Here I just want to uh, show you like, which is really quite obvious that like with the change of price range, the median value of battery power also increases which is quite obvious and also like for the RAM price we can see the very good linear relationship that how RAM size increases with the level of price range so higher the price of the mobile the higher is the amount of RAM memory also we can check the internal memory this is a little bit yeah not that linear because we can say that internal memory is more or less uh, having 30 gigabytes of uh, median value for all of these price range phones yeah okay so this step is important i reloaded the data again because we have seen in this is a good practice to be honest because in most of the cases like you do some short of data manipulation when you do data visualization just to make your plot beautiful or make it more attractive okay so 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 to avoid this issue we reload always the data set before we do any sort of modeling mm -hmm. so uh, in feature engineering we did not do anything just we converted the price range from integer 64 to category okay so before we can check what is the value so it is in 64 and then convert it to category and let's check okay it's fine okay so now moving to the modeling which is the main focus of this video so first uh, what are the basic steps of doing modeling so first we create the um, a set called capital x where we keep only those variables which are independent so the feature set let's say and y contains those values which is basically price range because this is the dependent variable so this is the first step we split our data set into capital x and small y so you can check the shape of x is 2000 by 20 so we have removed the dependent variable and y is having only price range so it is basically a series of 2000 observations next i split our train in, into train and test set okay so we have x and y and we split this x into x train and x test and y into y train and y test and what is the percentage of split is the test size uh, we basically have 20 percent of the data as test set so if i want to check it let me check it x test so it says 400 which is basically 20 percent of uh 2000 okay now i uh, call the knn model so i already loaded this knn neighbors classifier i'm calling with with five neighbors and then i am calling the fit method of this model knn 
so what does it do fit method creates a model a trend model which is based on x trend and y trend then i would like to predict uh, on x test and get the predicted y values so if i do that i get the predicted y values and then i check the accuracy score between y test and y predict so y test is basically the actual values and y predict which we predicted just now so if i say yeah so this is basically a 93 percent accuracy which is not quite bad so this is basically the whole uh, modeling procedure like we first uh, divide our data set into feature set and dependent variable set which is basically the thing which we have to predict the price range then we split it into 80 20 percent in this case into trend set and test set then we create this model with the trend set and then apply this on the test set and then calculate the accuracy score so these are the steps now uh, we have to, uh, I will talk about the cross validation. So why this is important. So when we did this 80% 20% split in this stage, we do not know whether this 20% of the test set or 80% of the trend set represent the whole data set or not. It might not be uniform. Suppose we are trying to predict the poor and uh, rich people. It might happen that all the trend set information contains only the data for rich people and the test set data contains only the data from poor people so the distribution is not uniform in this case uh, our model accuracy would be really uh, affected by this uh, non-uniform distribution so to solve this issue we can do cross validation so i am talking about one type of cross validation which is called x fold cross validation or k fold cross validation i chose the name x just not to confuse with the k neighbors or yeah any other value and so what i do basically i take the whole data and split it like we did before like 80 percent and 20 percent but i do this for five times or the number of folds times so we take test so let's say split the data into five partitions in our five fold cross validation then use fold one as a test set and rest of them as trend set then calculate the test accuracy okay and we repeat this process for all these five steps where I take the fold number two, three, four, and five respectively as test set in the next steps. And I take the average of all these test set accuracies to calculate the estimate of sample accuracy. So that is what the cross validation done does. So I would like to show you that how it happens. So this is first we do call the KN neighbor classifier with n neighbors five. Then I calculate the cross val score so this is the method i do not need to pass here the uh, test uh, trend split because cross validation does it internally okay this uh, method does it internally and i pass the model x y cross validation 10 so this means that it is basically 10 fold cross validation and scoring method accuracy because this is classification problem so if i do that i check the scores So that is why we take this uh, mean of accuracy because some accuracy might be low and some accuracies might be quite high. So we take the average of all this accuracy and, and consider this as the estimate accuracy. So here I would like to show you that how uh, this accuracy might vary with the value variable values of K. So I have chosen K values. So K is basically here the neighbors in KNN model. Okay. So I chose the value of K between 1 to 40 and i run this model so what i did i take a for loop here and then i call this k neighbor classifier with n neighbors k right starting from 1 to 40 and i consider this uh, calculate this course with the um, cross validation five fold and i append the scores mean basically so it calculates the mean of all these five cross validation course scores and append it and then i get the value so if I get the value, let's see. Okay, so this is basically the first value, which means the value of ac accuracy with K1. And this is the value of accuracy with K40. So K is basically number of neighbors in KNN. So if I do a line plot, I can see that the value of accuracy gets highest when the value of K is around 10 or 26. 
okay so here i have to talk a bit about uh, what should be our step now to what should be like our step to take the optimal value of k so when the value of k is low that means it is very high variance and low bias that is the case of overfitting okay and when the value of k is very very high that means it is low variance and high bias that means that means it is basically underfitting okay so we have to take a value of k which is in between so that the model is not overfitted or underfitted so we can consider the value of k either 10 or 26 but we have to also ensure that the more the value of k is the more simple is the model so that's why in this case i would prefer to take the value of k as 26 instead of 10 because it will give a more simplistic model knn model for this task so i just wanted to talk about this cross validation score how to calculate how to change the value of k in knn model to check how this model accuracy changes so these are the things which i wanted to discuss in this video and most importantly telling what uh, why this uh, cross validation is important in our modeling so in our next uh, lesson i would like to discuss about how we do the feature engineering and data visualization and maybe we would try a couple of more models and compare it to check which one is working the best or giving the best accuracy